You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video. And by Utech, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. I'm Renee Ritchie, I am John P. Standin, his stunt double for right now, and I'm with the awesome Miriam Dwar. Hey, how's it going, Renee? It's going fantastic, it's great to be here with you. Yeah, it's like, you know you know what John's doing right now, right? I believe he has a ninja suit on and he's climbing up the side of the Mirage. No. No? No. No? He's seeing a famous musician, let, let me guess, you want to guess? Elton John. No. Madonna. Madonna. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's, uh, oh, oh, I know, I know, no, no, I know who it is. I know exactly who it is. It is InfoSec Taylor Swift. Yes, that's it. InfoSec Taylor Swift. Awesome. We anyway, have an awesome product Yes, with us we today. have a phenomenal product with us today. We have Stuart. How are you, Stuart? I'm great, thanks. And thanks. you were kind enough to tell me to properly pronounce it as Ecobee. Ecobee, Ecobee. yes. No one has to drink. That is a fun, that is a fun name. Yeah, we had a lot of fun uh, putting it up and it really came to you know, what we tried to do with the company when we started it, which was around how do we use technology to help people conserve energy, save money, reduce their environmental impact. And because heating and cooling is so much of your energy consumption, better managing it has a huge impact. So that's an incredibly noble purpose. Like you could have made slot machines or something. What made you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> we were foolish, yes. Um, we, can, but, we can do something good for the world. Well, it's interesting actually. Like when, I, when we started the company, I was looking at ways to you know, greenify my life and I ended up putting solar panels on my roof. So I have $26,000 worth of solar panels on my roof. I have a $200 Ecobee. My $200 Ecobee <laughs> saves me as much energy every year as my $26,000 in solar panels produce. So it's a massive, massive impact. Wait, wait, how does it do how that? How does that work? Yeah, how does it work? Well, it's because heating and cooling is such a big part of your energy. So you use about as much energy heating and cooling as you do driving your car. And our average customer saves about 23% on their heating and cooling costs. So it's a you know big impact, very low cost, pays for itself in less than a year. Um, so what distinguishes your thermostat from, you know, the well-known competition. It goes to 11. Yeah, <laughs> it's way better. It's I way like better. that. Well played. <laughs> well played. Um, so we, uh, this is our Ecobee 3, which is our third generation thermostat. Um, we just launched it in September, so it's brand new. We call it the smarter Wi-Fi thermostat for homes with more than one room. And what makes this thermostat different is that it comes with remote sen sensors that measure both temperature and occupancy. Can you so, tilt it towards me a little bit? Oh, I apologize. Yeah, nice. Go. There you go. Um, and so the nice thing about this product is, you know, we're trying to tackle the number one consumer complaint, which is, you know what, my, it's comfortable in my hallway where my thermostat is, but that doesn't mean it's comfortable in the room where I actually live. That is the problem in my house. Yeah. So you can put one of these sensors in the room where you are. It's got a motion sensor as well as a temperature sensor in it. It knows when you're in that room, and it'll actually use that as the control sensor instead of the one in the, in the gotcha. thermostat. Gotcha, and so how are they connected? Are they both Wi-Fi connected? Um, so the thermostat connects by Wi-Fi, and it also has a 900 megahertz radio in it, which allows these devices to connect. Um, so this is battery powered, last five years, put it wherever you like. Um, and then it's got an expansion radio slot for Zigbee or Z-Wave or something else in the future. Cool. And, uh, and how many see, sensors can you hook up to it? So you can hook up to 32 sensors Whoa. in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> for the Bill Gates version, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I'll is really, really get big. a mansion first, then oh. I'll get the sensors. Stately Wayne Manor and a lot of sensors. Yes. Hey, you know who could use that? Steve Wynn. Oh, yeah. Uh, can we, we'll talk after the show. So, <laughs> exactly. It's a good commission in it for you. Um, yeah, so most customers have somewhere between one and four sensors in their homes, and they'll put one, you know, in their bedroom. Yeah, or how do you recommend? What, what sort of layout do you recommend for people? So it does really two things. So the first function it does is what we talked about, which is this concept we call follow me, which is understands which rooms you're in and makes you comfortable in those rooms. So those sensors you want to put in the rooms that you use most often, your family room, your kitchen, you know, bedroom, whatever the case might be. Um, and then the other function it does is this smart home away, right? So we know when you're home and when you're away. Um, and you know what you see with some of our competitors is you know my thermostat isn't right. necessarily in a good location. Let's say it's in my dining room. I never use my dining room. Yep. It always thinks I'm away. Right yes. now you can put a sensor, let's say in your kitchen or in a hallway or so wherever it is that's. Convenient. Why I like this so much is like, we, we've seen the matrix between Terminator. All this computer stuff was supposed to kill us, yeah. right. but we're getting these smart things that are just they're sort of contextually aware. Right. They're not like sentient, but they know enough well, about what's going on around them. That they can give wait us. Wait a second, okay. Renee. No, no. This is they want us to think they're nice, <laughs> and then when we accept them, then they will take over. Dormant AI, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> does it come with a single sensor in the box? So it does. So it comes with a thermostat, a single sensor in the box. And what's the price point for the thermostat and the single sensor and then additional sensors? Um, so the thermostat and the sensor uh, retail for $249. 
Um, and then additional sensors are a pack of two or $79. Whoa. And then it comes with mobile and web apps. Pack so of two, two pack. So our chat room is asking, and I'm, it's, I'm yeah. sure this is paranoia, uh, what's the privacy like? I'm sure like all this information about when you're at your house, it's all just yours, right? Yeah. It's not going up into some universal cloud where Big Brother's monitoring me. Um, so it does go into our cloud. So we provide cloud services, but it's your data and we don't do anything with it without your permission. We have open API, so we integrate with things like SmartThings and a whole bunch of Control 4 and a bunch of other automation systems, for example. Um, HomeKit? Pardon me? HomeKit? I uh, can't talk about HomeKit. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> it's like Fight Club. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's right, that's right. Um, but we are in the Apple stores, Okay. Uh, Ooh, you know, which is really ooh, exciting. And that's so, a hint. Uh, <laughs> question though, uh, we had um, quick set Kivo the lock yep. on our show like what, two or three segments ago? Right. And I was wondering, do you have integration with them yet? Uh, so we don't have integration with uh, quick set. We have about maybe five, six hundred developers building applications okay. around our platform and our goal is to build that out and to, you know, we're not trying to do everything. So our focus is energy and how do we build the best products to help people conserve energy and then allow other people to, you know, integrate and do their part and, and do other pieces. There's so many home automation, things, like you have speakers and yep. lights yep. and uh, how do you try, like if someone came to you for advice, they want to do the fun stuff, but how do you convince them to do the stuff that saves them money first? Is that a right. hard sell? I don't think so because I think, you know, when you look at, so when we look at Connected Home, we see three constellations, right? One is entertainment, one is security, and one is um, energy, right? And why people are buying this product right now is because it has a very simple value proposition. I understand what it does, I can control it through my smartphone, it actually does what it says it's going to do, that's really great. And so, I think customers get it, and, and that's what makes it relatively easy. Giving them money back is an easy sell. It's an easy <laughs> sell, but it's also, you know, getting them over the hump of, you know, I would love to have all these things in my house doing all these things, but whoa, it sounds complicated. But once you get comfortable with a device like this that's really simple and easy to use and all that kind of stuff, then you're like, okay, now what else can I do, right? right. And that's where you start getting into the integration. But until people get their toe wet, they really, you know, they're kind of like, ooh, that sounds Do you sounds find great. like once they get one connected thing, they're, they're much more likely to get more and more connected things? Yeah, like absolutely. the connected dominoes? Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> right? Which is, you I know, want those. Connected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, certainly. Make it so. Like in our focus groups, you see that absolutely. Like people who have a connected product versus people who are thinking to buy a connected product, like their interest in the category goes up astronomically, right? So, quick question, this is Ecobee 3. Uh, tell us maybe about the last two generations of products you made. Sure. Are they still on sale? Is there uh, a difference in price? Yeah, so um, our first generation was our Ecobee Smart Thermostat, which was the first Wi-Fi connected thermostat in the market, which we started shipping in 2009. And then uh, in 2011, we came out with the Smart SI, which was a less expensive, fewer bells and whistles version. And that, ver that version you can probably get on Amazon right now for about $149. And then this product replaces the Ecobee Smart Thermostat, which is the Ecobee 3, which has all the, you know, all our knowledge went into this product. Um, and so the remote, Sensor capability is only in the Eco B3? It's only in the okay. Eco B3. So the remote sensor capability, the occupancy detection, um, there's some new uh, energy saving algorithms that are in this product that are not in some of the other products. Um, this one has a cap uh, touch screen, um, so it's a really responsive touch, touch screen like the one that's in your smartphone. Um, we really focused on making it you know, look beautiful in my home, you know, make it really easy to use and focus on energy savings. I see you have an iPhone on the table. How, how does it work? Does it work just with mobile devices, only certain platforms, because it work with computers yeah. too? Yep. Yeah, so again, one of the big differentiators between us and, our, and some of our competitors anyway is we have both mobile apps and a web app. Um, and so depending on the device that you feel most comfortable using, you can use that device. But the other really nice thing about the web app is that we can give you a ton of analytics, right? So you get access to all your data, you can see exactly how your system works, um, and then you can you know, either use the APIs or download it into Excel or you know, do all kinds of nice stuff. Now I've seen Iron Man, I've seen Jarvis, yep. I've yep. seen the future of this stuff. How close are we getting to where we have like this, like this, this, this automated home that sort of responds to us, talks to us, takes care of us? I think we're getting really close actually. You know, I mean, one of the things that's blown me away at CES, so when we started, right, and I started this company, you know, people said like, what the, is that guy doing, <laughs> Why right? Are you Thermostats, doing this? like what, what the, <laughs> you know? And now, you know, you come to CES and, you know, like the Samsung Smart Things, uh, you know, booth where Smart Things is the center of the whole yeah. booth. Um, and you see some of the, you know, the interactions that they can enable and that kind of stuff, and it's really, truly amazing. So I have a, uh, kind of a tough question for you. As a tech journalist, I, I have. So you know, why do you think it is that your comp you know, Nest, the biggest, most well-known yeah. thermostat, Connect thermostat, is the most well-known thermostat? Clearly, you've been doing this for a while. Yeah, I think you know, um, 
the guys at Nest are smart guys, right? And uh, there's no question, like when, when we talk about it internally, we feel like we're competing against the Sergey Bubka of consumer electronics. <laughs> right? Like, you know, very, they're very, very smart guys. But that in turn makes us better, right? And so I think, you know, when you look at this market, it's really being competed by Honeywell, Nest, and ourselves. And I think you know, one of the key differentiators is that we're really focused on energy. And so we believe we're going to give you a much better product, a much better value pro proposition focused on energy, while they're focused on a bunch of other things. Right, that I like this. I like really that fun. there's several companies, because I might, be, I might see one of them get really interested in the category, yep. but not like the leader in the category. And I might think that someone like you is going to work harder or do more things, yep. or in some way just better serve my needs. I think that's right. And I think you know that gap is closing, you know, really close. Like the three of us are really, really close right I now. I just like to root for the underdog. That's all. But but uh, I think um, you know you've made it very clear to me. Like I could, when I'm at my house, I, I pretty much have to have this product because I need the remote sensing. Yeah. So there, yes. you made a customer right yeah. there. And then the other thing, frankly, is I think you have you know. Your product seems a lot less nerdy and geeky, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I think for this kind of product, it really matters. You know, for my smartphone, I want it to Miriam be as nerdy. Miriam is saying it's like this, yeah, That's my <laughs> point. Like, for that, you know, when On I review a phone. On the scale of nerdiness. When I review a phone, it has to be nerdy, yes. but because that's me, because it's years and years of but reviewing But I can phones. envision, like, going to my mom, like, so one of my concerns was, like, setting up my mom with a smart connected exactly. home or something. I want her to have, like, stuff that's easy to use, but also, like, she doesn't have to worry about, oh, I'm in a different room, not to go back there and put it three degrees lower, and yep. I don't want it to be a chore. That's right. Yeah. And we spent a ton of time on that, really focusing on the user experience. There's some really nice interactions, and I think you know one of the nice things about having that cap touch screen is it works like your smartphone, so you already know how it works. It's got animations like your smartphone. This makes it a lot easier, and it's a bigger screen than either of our competitors, and so again, you know, you can show more data and make it easier for people to use it. Any uh, future, I mean, what, have, what can you speak Reading to? Reading my mind. In, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, we do this a lot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, any, any future features that you can speak of, perhaps, on the record about about uh, what you can integrate, sure. because you get this large display and capacitive yep. surface, yep. you know, obviously your phone is always in the pocket, it's a bit of a hassle to pull out. What else can we see that's maybe not a thermostat type application on this device? So I think, you know, the first thing that we're launching uh, next week will be IFTT integration. And uh -huh. uh, IFTT integration, nice. you know, really, you know, enables a whole bunch of interactions. So many recipes. And you guys said yeah. it wasn't going to be nerdy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. You can yeah. serve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're really, really excited about that. And I think, you know, within our user base, you know, that's really exciting. There's a lot of stuff we're doing with our APIs and our analytics and really trying to grow that, you know, ecosystem of partners um, so that people can do more and create more, you know, other people can bring more value to this type of product faster. Cool. So, uh, what's what's your favorite thing about it? What do you use the most? What do you yeah. like the most? Well, it's interesting. I think you know one of my favorite things about it, which is you know which is kind of a silly thing, is just the weather, right? So one of the nice things about this product is you get you know we use weather to make smarter heating and cooling decisions, but you know even though I have weather on my phone, even though I have weather on the radio, even though you know it's just nice to walk by and you know. Does it show you a five-day forecast? It does. It shows you a five-day <laughs> forecast and all that stuff. So when you're walking out the door, that's so you know good. you can yeah. see what you want to wear and all that kind of stuff. And that's like a dead simple thing that you know consumers love. Um, Can you just have it flash, winter is coming, winter is coming, winter <laughs> yeah. is coming. Probably does that all year. Yeah. 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 That's like three months of non-winter. <laughs> yeah, you, right. you walk up to it. Those and three it, days it, in July. Yeah. Dave telling, wants to know if it has a groundhog built in. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to, when I walk by it, like, give me like little like encouragements, you know, like. Uh, you are a good person, and yeah. gosh darn it, people yeah. like you. Go yeah. get him today, go positive get him. Positive affirmation. <laughs> you, you, you really and nailed you, your and meeting and yesterday. You, and, you, and you tap it, it becomes a magic eight ball. <laughs> Check back <laughs> later. Yeah. Could be raining. Yeah, there I you think go. You know, some of the stuff on the analytics is really cool too. So being able to kind of understand how energy efficient your home is and those kinds of things. Um, we create an energy model of your house and that type Does of stuff. Does it come cool. in only the colors and design I'm looking at now? Uh, I mean, obviously. You want it in gold. Um, no, I'm curious <laughs> if you have different uh, screen shades and you're like a light. We don't today. No, that's it yeah, for now? Just, Comes like this. She's, she wants it in gold. I actually yeah. like this. This is good. No, yeah. it looks gorgeous. And you want something neutral, I think, on the I wall. I like the fact that it's uh, high tech enough looking, but not like, oh my God, what is this? You know, like if you saw it in a house, you wouldn't really know what it is. All right, so I, I got to ask you the tough question. We're at the, the beginning, sort of, these connected devices. Are, someone buying this now, they're going to have their home maybe 10, 15 years. Do you think about how they're going to upgrade if they want to stay with your product yep. over time? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like one of the nice things about this is when we started the company, we, we really started building this product on a smartphone architecture. So if you open this up, on in the inside, it would look more like your smartphone than a typical thermostat. And that was very different because everything else was built with a really small PIC processor at the time. So this has got, you know, 256 megs of RAM and 256 megs of flash. It's got three radios, it's software upgradable, it's got a, you know, 
color screen. So you could make this anything. It is a gateway. In It'll and of last itself. you for a while. It'll last you for a while. It's you know. What sensors do you have on there? Proximity, temperature, humidity. Occupancy, humidity. Uh, Barometer. No. No. Will it tell you when the kids are sneaking out at night? It does. Nice. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Do you have a laser that Parent shoots mode. out? Yeah, Parent. You can't la freaking laser. You can't laser your children? Of course, why not? They're you, children. You move they to have to learn somehow. <laughs> Right. Yeah, proximity heat burn. Well, that's so I have, you know, so I have, uh, you know, so you have with the IFTT integration, right? You can say, hey, when my house is unoccupied, you know, send me a note, right? And so then you. If my uh, occupancy exceeds 20 uh, and I'm yeah. on vacation, yeah, yeah, text exactly. me party, party warning, party that's warning. Right. Well, we had a funny story about that where the guy said, you know, I get this message from my Ecobee and says, you know, there's a problem with my air conditioning, you know, better check. And the guy's like, it's like two o'clock in the morning. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. He calls his daughter. He's like. You're having a party, are you? She's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, the thermostat told me. Oh, it could be busted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. Do you have uh, any uh, accelerometers or vibration sensors on there for whatever reason that I might not be active? Because you know, no. packages, sensors yeah. come packaged now, so you're just kind of curious. They do. We don't um, because it's mounted to the wall. It doesn't. You doesn't know, help it, you. It doesn't if, really. If, if you're in a mudslide area. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking earthquakes. Like you know, if all of, all the sensors Time in your house can, yeah. can detect vibration, in my house it'd be all the trucks that go by all the time. Yeah. It'd be like, yeah. Well, I'm sure you you take product feedback, right? Yep. Yeah. Go to the website. Where can people go if they want to either find out more about you or leave you earthquake suggestions? <laughs> so <laughs> www.ecobee.com, and then we're available in Home Depot, Best Buy, Apple, um, Amazon. So Terrific. all the usual places. Awesome. Well, all right. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. All right. I'm gonna put one in this stage right now because I want to. I want the. It gets hot when Dave's on the switcher. Like the, the temperature just keeps rising, and I want to be able to dynamically lower the air conditioning. It's actually cooler now than it was when I got on stage. By the way. <laughs> He's throwing me the horns from control. I don't know how to take that. <laughs> it's like Craig Federici throwing me the horn. Uh, we have a lot more coming your way. We got a panel discussion coming up. CES Live is not going to stop. It never stops. It goes on all year. In fact. We never moved here. No. We came back, the stage was here, we are just like, yeah, okay. We're here of our own free will. We are allowed to leave. Yes, sir, we are. I'm standing with Miriam Dwar. I'm Renee Ritchie. This is CES Live, and we have a break, Dave? Yes. We have a break coming up, but stay with us. We'll be right back. Do not change that internet channel. Do not Don't change do it. it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, unless you're going to go order a thermostat. Just switch tabs and come back. It. All right. Real quickly. Get a drink. <laughs>